1969 Camaro. LS3 engine. Terminator X, let's do this. Some of the parts that you'll need that are not in the kit, intake air temp sensor or manifold air temp sensor. We plan to install this air temp sensor in the intake. You'll need a unit bit, also known as a step drill to drill the hole into the intake. And you'll need a tap to run some threads into the mother You'll need two 30 amp relays to run your fan and fuses to protect those relays. And if you plan to run a fuel pump that's over 15 amps, you need another relay for that and a fuse. If your oil pressure sensor don't look like this, that shit ain't gonna work with the Holly Terminator X. So pick up a new oil pressure sensor. There's a part number for you guys. The Holly Terminator X is set up to read fuel pressure. So you need a zero to 100 PSI sensor and you need an adapter to hook it up to your fuel system. This is 1.8 MPT. These are 6AN and this sensor is from Dollar Motorsports. All right, now let's go over everything that's in the box. Engine harness. Main power harness. Adapter for your O2 sensor. Harness for your injectors. These are different depending on what injector you get, but this is the same. Input output harness. The only wires you're gonna use on this thing are gonna be your gray green for your fan and your gray red for your other fan. They control the ground side of your fans. Your LCD screen. And an owner's manual that nobody fucking reads. You also get a nifty wideband O2 sensor. You also get the computer. No shit, I almost forgot that. All right, let's go over all this crap so that way you're not on Facebook on some LS Swap beginner page asking some other idiots why your shit won't start. All right, guys, so there's everything laid out. Let's go over all this crap so you guys don't screw up the installation. All right, starting off that computer. You got your main power coming in. Goes into this plug right here. These two right here. Make sure you connect that straight to the battery. Don't fuck around. Next up, you have your vacuum port. Go straight to the map sensor that's inside, calibrated for one bar. Make sure you use that unless you're wearing a boost or some other kind of force induction. Then you got your two main connectors for your harness. These two right here. You can't swap them around. They only go in one way. All right, let's follow this harness down. The first wire you come up to is you have to hook up this black wire to a chassis ground. There's red white wire to 12 volt key on. Make sure it has 12 volts while it's cranking too. Half the time I see a no crank issue is because this wire loses 12 volts when it's cranking. Make sure you have 12 volts key on and cranking. Next up, you have a relay of fuse. Then you have your can connector. This is where you plug in your LCD screen or your USB adapter cable if you're gonna hook it up to your laptop. All right, next, next up we have this power tap. This is good for a five volt reference or 12 volt reference, sensor ground or chassis ground. All right, next up we have this input output harness. Now chances are, if you're watching my video, you probably got your, your LS engine from a junkyard and you're just trying to get it running. So you won't have all this fancy stuff like turbos and waste kits and all this other crap. So you're only gonna use two wires from here. You're gonna use this gray and red and this gray and yellow. What these two wires do is they're programmed to turn on your fans or give your relay for your fan a ground. So make sure you run 12 volts key on to this relay. And then when the wire, when the computer decides it's time to turn the fans on, it'll ground this out. You'll have your fuse coming from your battery to your relay. And then when this gets grounded out, this closes, sends 12 volts up to your fans, make sure your fan is grounded to the chassis. All right, we're moving on. Next up, you have these three wires. Your green wire goes to your fuel pump. It's 12 volts positive. It'll, it'll feed your fuel pump and make sure your fuel pump is grounded. If your fuel pump runs over 15 amps, you're gonna need to use this to trigger a relay. So if you use this for the relay, you're gonna put, you're gonna ground this out to the frame, run this green wire to this uh, white wire here to give it 12 volts. And then when this gets 12 volts, turn your fuel pump on, this relay clicks on. Again, another fuse for your fuel pump from the battery to here. This goes to your fuel pump now, and then you grind out your fuel pump to the chassis. All right, back to the harness. This green one, 12 volts for your fuel pump. This blue one, it's gonna give you a tax signal. You can either hook it up to your decode digital gauges, an alarm system, or something else that needs some kind of tax signal. 
there's red one make sure you go to battery 12 volts constant moving on now we have this injector harness here this this connector this one plugs into this these harnesses are different depending on which injector you're using there's three different types you could do ev1 ev6 or multic all right moving on let's go to the right side you will have your cam sen your crank sensor and then your knock sensor these are gonna be by the starter then you have your harness with your adapter to your wideband o2 sensor now we're going back you'll also have this map sensor that you're not going to use unless you're running over um, some kind of force induction then you want to plug this into like a one bar or i mean a two bar or three bar map sensor all right left side you got your knock sensor connector left side bottom of the engine this is for ls threes this is where you hook up your oil pressure sensor i already gave you the part number for that make sure you hook up this ground on the right side for your freaking uh inject or your coils and then hook up this on the left side cylinder head for your left bank coils these are the connectors for your coils you get one for each side the driver's side is going to be your odd side passenger side is going to be your even same thing for the injectors all right keep going on the harness now you will have your tps sensor that goes in your throttle body your fuel input that goes on the sensor that i give you you'll have your idle air control goes in your throttle body this harness goes down you have your coolant temp sensor that's on the side of your head next you'll have your cam sensor that's down in the front cover by the crankshaft and then last you'll have your Manifold air temp sensor, which is the one we're going to screw into the intake. All right, that's the entire harness. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, the way the harness is laid out is designed so all the harness wiring goes to the back and then you can run it to the firewall somewhere back there. So we got to make a hole. All right, so I'm going to assume most of you guys were competent enough to run the freaking wiring. But for those of you that rode the short bus to school, don't forget your ground wires in the back of the cylinder heads and that red white wire. Make sure it has 12 volts when it's cranking. Now let's go set up this Harry Potter wizard crap. All right, so the first time you cycle it on, if you don't get that, you're in trouble. So you should get this perform TPS auto reset or auto set before startup. You're going to hit OK on that. Now you're going to go to your wizard. Here's your TPS auto set. So you're going to have the key on. And then you're going to press, press the pedal all the way to the floor twice. What this is doing it's setting up your idle air control so that way it knows when the TPS is not pressed and the pedal is pressed all the way wide open throttle. Then you hit next. Hit done. All right, so next we're gonna set up our global file, which is pretty easy. You're gonna go back to wizard. From here, you're gonna go to global file. Then since we have an LS, we're gonna use multi-port fuel injection. You're gonna hit next. We have an LS, like I said, we're gonna hit next. We have eight cylinders. That's a firing order. <clears throat> so here you're gonna hit L for liters. And if you still have your man card, you're probably gonna type in either 6.2 or higher. This is LS3, so we'll put 6.2. If your girlfriend showed your engine, you'll probably type in 4.8 or 5.3. Then you're gonna hit next. Target speed, you wanna hit around 800 RPM. So let's go with 850, hit next. So this duration right here, this is for your intake uh, lobe. So make sure you figure out, if you have a different cam, figure out what your intake is for your duration and then put that in. So we're gonna start with the first one, so that's the one we have. Right here, if you have a Gen 3, you're probably gonna use 24 times. If you have a Gen 4, like we do for LS3, you're gonna use 58. Make sure you figure out which one you have before you even try to set up this system. So we're going with 58, hit next. For the, oil, for the fuel pressure, if you're running the Corvus style fuel filter put at 60, even though it's 58 PSI, um, <clears throat> if you're using adjustable fuel pressure regulator, put whatever PSI you want. You could go in the table later on into your laptop and then change this. But for now, we're gonna use 60 for ours. For here, we're gonna use OEM injectors. We have LS3 injectors. If you're using different injectors, figure out which ones you have. If you're GM injectors, you come down here through the drop down and figure out which ones you have but we're using the LS3s. So now we hit next. No power adders. We have, we're using the internal one bar map sensor. 
and then you hit start. Now it's gonna program your computer. Now if you're using the Terminator X Max, you have other options for your transmission, your gears, all sort of stuff. All right, so now we hit okay, we're gonna start with the key on and off. Hit finish. So make sure um, once you cycle the key and you turn the key on, you should hear your fuel pump kick on. That means it took it took the programming correctly. And then after that, turn the key on. It's a good time to check for leaks. Make sure you don't have any fuel leaks. But um, I'm pretty good, so I'm not gonna check that. And now I'm gonna give it a start to see if it cranks. Hold on, let me freaking. All right, here we go. There we go. Use your monitor here, gauges, and then there's our fuel pressure right there. The rest of our settings. Here's your idle air control. In order to set your idle air control, you have to be at operating temperature around 200 degrees. So once we get there, I'll show you guys how to set that. All right, guys. So we're almost warmed up, and we're looking at our idle air control. So uh, shit, come back. All right, so let's go real quick over how the idle air control works and what we're looking for. All right, so for those that don't know, this is your idle air control motor. So think of your throttle blade as a door, right? So here is closed, door is wide open. When it's closed, not much air is able to get around the throttle body, the blade. So what this does is there's a passage that goes in front of the throttle blade through here where it's blocked off by this and then it goes into the intake. This will open up and allow air to bypass the throttle body blade and go into the intake. So it controls your idle by allowing more air to go through the around it. And then it'll open and close to try to control your idle. So when this number on your gauge or on your Terminator X, when this number is high, that means it's opened a lot. When it's at zero or it's real low, that means it's almost completely closed. So the way to adjust this when the engine's fully warm, you want to get this to around 10. So if the number, let's say the engine's fully warm and the number's at 50, that means this way is halfway closed. So you need to open this up a little bit more to let more air flow in through the throttle blade. And then that way this will close down more because it doesn't need as much air going through here. So if you have a high number here, you have to open up your throttle blade, which means screw this in. If you have a low number here at zero, or you want to get it up a little bit higher to around 10%, then that means you're going to have to close this down because this is pretty much all the way closed and there's already too much air going through the throttle blade. So you have to close the throttle blade. Hopefully that makes sense, guys. So one thing we're going to need to monitor is the throttle position. So we're going to change this out here so we don't really care about the AC shutdown and change that to the throttle position. So we're going to go back out of here. We're going to go to dash setup. We're going to change dash three. And then we're gonna change the gauge. So we're gonna click on the gauge we wanna change. And then we're gonna go down to look for your throttle position. Which one is it? There it is, throttle position, hit okay. Hit okay, okay, save. So now when we go here, it's gonna show our throttle position. All right, now that the engine's fully warmed up, we wanna adjust this number so it's between zero to 10%. So what do we have to do to lower this number here? All right, if you said screw in the idle control screw to open the throttle body, you're a fucking genius and thanks for paying attention. Also, pay attention to this number here as it'll change when we screw in the screw to open the throttle body. All right, so we're gonna use a four millimeter Allen and we're gonna barely adjust this to where it opens up the throttle body just a little bit. Right there. So you gotta turn off the car, key back on, and then we're gonna do a wizard again. So let's get out of here, let's go back home, go to wizard, auto TPS, start. I'm gonna press the pedal to the floor slowly twice, and then hit next. Done. Now that you got the monitor, we go to the monitor we'll see that our TPS is not zero. So after we reset it, we're gonna start it up again. And then we're gonna monitor the idle air control right here. It'll always jump up because it wants to make sure it gets enough air for the engine to start. Then it should slowly 
go down and once this settles, you'll see where you're at. So you want to be between zero to 10% and we're already underneath that. So that's perfect. So that's what we want. Right here where it says 1%, this should be between zero to 1%. It'll fluctuate um, a little bit. So don't stress out if it's that one. If it's over one, like if that 2% or whatever, then you want to do another TPS reset. If you're having issues getting that to zero to one, you want to make sure you do your TPS reset with the fans off because those draw a lot of current too. All right, so that's pretty much it for the install. As you can see, it wasn't that hard. Freaking, if, you, if you're ready to order one of your Terminator X kits and Jags or Summit told you three or four months back ordered, freaking hit up my boy Dale at ProTouringStore.com. He has most of this shit in stock, including LS engines, fuel tanks, everything you need for your LS swap. If he don't have it, you don't fucking need it. Also, since he's a small business, supporting him helps the environment or some shit. If you still have questions, feel free to comment down below and maybe some stranger will see it, answer it, and then you guys become best friends on MySpace or some shit. If you want me to help you out, subscribe to my Instagram. That's where people pay me to help them fix their stuff. And if you want to support me because this video helped you out or provided entertainment while you're sitting on the crap and trying to push one out, you know what to do. And I'm not talking about subscribing or liking this channel. I'm talking about sending money to my cash app, a couple bucks, so that way I can buy more parts, make more videos for you guys, and hopefully finish up that Chevelle before my 10-year-old daughter graduates college. Cue the fucking logo.